American President Barack Obama has admitted to what he is calling the worst mistake in his presidency. And it has to do with the Libyan crisis. President Obama said it was failing to prepare for the aftermath of Muammar Gaddafi's fall in 2011, although he still maintained the international intervention in Libya was the right thing to do. The U.S. and its allies carried out airstrikes meant to protect civilians at the height of the civil war in Libya. But after Gaddafi was killed, the country plunged into chaos. It was first run by scores of rival militia groups. Later, the country had two governments, and even now there's still insecurity about the new unity government. President Obama was speaking to Fox News in an interview and said, quote, Probably failing to plan for the day after what I think was the right thing to do in intervening in Libya. Obama has previously referred to the Libyan crisis as a mess and has criticized both France and the United Kingdom for not doing enough. And plenty of social media reactions to that statement by President Obama. CCTV's Maria Galang takes us through some of them. Following President Obama's remarks, there have been strong reactions on social media. Many blaming America for the chaos in Libya. Others blamed America for the chaos in Syria and other nations too. Some blame the African Union and the African people as a whole for not doing enough to protect Libya. While others were sympathetic to Obama's admission. Maria Galang, CCTV. Well, let's get you more now on that story. And I'm joined live from Washington, D.C. by CCTV's Daniel Rangers. Uh, Daniel, let's start uh, with this question, though. Quite a strong statement there from President Obama on Libya and being the worst mistake of his career. What more can you tell us about that, though? Well, imagine if you were that you're President Obama sitting in the Oval Office and suddenly you're presented with a crisis in which... Uh, Muammar Gaddafi is threatening to kill many of his own people. But you're the president that's campaigned on hope and change and the idea that America just doesn't do the kind of large-scale interventions that were done in Iraq and possibly Afghanistan. Uh, so what do you do? There was a furious debate within the administration with uh, then-Secretary Clinton really advocating for a full-blown intervention and some others like Secretary Gates of the Defense Department saying it simply wasn't in America's interest. So in the end, what President Obama decided to do was mainly support the air campaign and then rely or assume that he could rely on some of the European partners who were much closer regionally and had therefore much more, in his view, vested in the uh, structure of Libyan society going forward. But in an interview last week to the Atlantic Council, he was very critical of the French and the British. Um, and in particular, he said that David Cameron at this time had become distracted by lots of other things. Uh, that distraction uh, uh, or the accusation has caused uh, problems, I think, between uh, Washington and Downing Street. And that's why I think today we've seen this uh, admission by President Obama to say it was his worst mistake because it's almost like saying the buck stops with, stops with me and maybe that takes some of the heat out of the criticism of the Europeans. Well, uh, I'm now joined by Adele uh, Mahrui, joining us now from Cairo. Uh, Adele, this is quite a strong statement from uh, President Obama. They're uh, accepting that there were some mistakes made in the Libyan situation. Uh, Egypt is directly affected, though, by the instability in Libya. What's been Cairo's response to President Obama's comments? Well, um, there hasn't been an official comment from the Egyptian government yet on that 
uh, regard. But in general, um, Egypt has been quite frustrated by um, NATO's interference in Libya. They have always described that the NATO has not completed its mission in Libya. They just went in to give leverage uh, for the opposition until Muammar Gaddafi uh, was forced out of, from power. And then afterwards, they withdrew their forces. Uh, and they believe, the Egyptian administration believe that this was the main reason that has led um, the, Lib the, the current situation in Libya to um, become unbearable, to get out of hands, to see this very strong uh, presence of um, extremist Islamism in general, uh, particularly, of course, terrorist uh, groups. So, in generally, um, there isn't um, any addition um, from an Egyptian perspective to what has been um, said. It's the same argument from Libyan citizens who st also blame um, the NATO for not completing their mission. Now it's all about to Egyptian um, government. It's all about what will happen next. Talking about the past is not a progressive uh, talk and does not change anything on the ground. That's what Egypt is trying to push forward from across the international community. So to plan what will happen next in Libya. And this is what matters most now to Egypt. Well, Daniel, uh, Libya remains in chaos, and of course the wider region uh, remains concerned about uh, the effect of instability in Libya. Has President Barack Obama, though, offered any insights on the way forward when it comes to international efforts on the Libyan crisis? Well, I think uh, President Obama's key admission last week in the Atlantic Council article was that the analysis that was done here in Washington about the degree of tribalism or factionalism in Libya was simply inadequate. And I think that since then they've realized that the situation in Libya is much more complex and that they need to work with some of these groups on the ground in order to establish uh, an ability to then go after the Islamic State. And I think they've begun to do that on the quiet. We have also seen, of course, those um, uh, special forces strikes and aerial strikes from uh, drone aircraft and jets on certain targets. Uh, but fundamentally, the ad administration is now waiting to see if the unity government in Libya is going to be unified. If that is the case, I think we'll see much stronger intervention going forward. But again, it won't just be the Americans. The Americans have actually said at one point that the Italians are leading uh, all of those efforts. Uh, the French and the British also have expressed interest. But it's still a very fractious situation. So I think fundamentally Washington is planning for an intervention, but unable or unwilling to do so at this point. Well, Washington may be planning for uh, an international intervention and unable to do so at this point. But Adele... On the region, though, Egypt has been taking a forefront in this uh, situation. What is Egypt planning to do now when it comes to the Libyan crisis? Well, Egypt is trying to, first of all, and this is the priority of the Egyptian government, to lift the armed embargo over um, the Libyan government. Um, Egypt is trying to push forward first for a national unity government, uh, which in turn would enhance that. But um, if that takes a lot of time, as we're seeing, um, and has been struggling to get um, a general support from Libyan factions, Egypt believed that um, the internationally recognized Libyan parliament and the government formed uh, from it should be um, given um, the power, the arms um, and the weapons required for them um, to face um, the rising threats of terrorism first and then later on uh, continue uh, or at the same time parallel movement uh, to continue in the dialogue with Libyan factions to form a national unity government. So Egypt believes that the international community should move now um, and that from an Egyptian perspective would lift um, the barrier would lift also um, the responsibility from the neighboring countries um, and would lift um, many um, expected thousands and hundreds of thousands in the coming months or years um, to be moving from Libya to um, Europe at the same time. So from an Egyptian perspective, move now to support the internationally recognized government and then Meanwhile, the, the political process should be um, ongoing, but staying still and doing nothing about the situation in Libya 
keeping the arms embargo would only um, give more power to um, the militant groups inside the government inside um, the Libyan territory and, and therefore weaken um, the presence not just for the Tobruk uh, based government that Egypt strongly support but also would have its impact on the Western government from Tripoli so in any case Egypt wants to move right away but it doesn't want to do this independently it wants the international community it wants recognition uh, from the United Nations and this is one of them Egypt's main mission uh, in the coming uh, session um, excuse me in the coming period uh, this year and the next in the Security Council to push forward for that Right, uh, Adil Mahouri for us there in Cairo and Daniel Rangers in Washington, D.C. To you both, thank you.